Do you know what this is? Well, if you said paint fan deck, you would be correct. And you probably used a tool like this when it came time to pick a new paint color for a room in your home. But did you know that this tool is so much more powerful than just using it to choose a new color for a wall in your house? Now I mentioned this tool in my video about my essentials, the things I keep in my bag as I'm on the go going to and from design projects. And I promised you that I would give you more insight on how you could actually use this baby to up your color game. So today I wanna show you four ways that I use this tool to really help me get the most out of my color conversations with my clients. Now for the tricks I'll teach you today, you can really use most paint fan decks. I've got several different ones that I carry with me or keep at the office, just depending on the brand that we're specifying for our project. But for this demonstration, I'm going to primarily work out of the Sherwin-Williams paint fan deck. This is not a sponsored post. They're a great company, but they didn't pay me to do this. <laughs> I'm just using this paint fan deck because it happens to be the one in my hand and that's what I'm gonna to use to demonstrate the four tricks I'll teach you today. So let's get right into the first additional way you can use this tool to really up your color game. And it's really as basic as using it to find the colors that you are drawn to. We're not talking about colors necessarily that will be on the walls, but we want to see where your eye is drawn when you look at all of the options available to you. A paint fan deck in the color section is typically laid out in the Roy G. Biv layout, which is what we have learned since grade school is the rainbow. I learned this trick when I started off my career by asking people, what's your favorite color? And they had a hard time telling me. And so to really kind of eliminate the anxiety of the moment, I would just pull out my paint deck and just say, okay, tell me what you like. Like just if you could do anything, which colors do you like? And it really lowered the barrier for them so that they weren't feeling like they were committing to anything yet they really were able to just have a conversation about color. So the first trick that you can use when you're thinking about how to use this deck for your project is to really help it unlock for you the colors that you love. Now, if you find that during that exercise, you're actually drawn to more than one color, that's okay too. It might be the start of a really great color palette or it might not work at all together. However, it's really at this point about finding more information and really learning to speak the language of color. So as you're looking at the color options, if there are maybe two or three colors that you really love, you can go ahead and earmark them and save them for the next trick that I'm going to teach you. So the second way that I use the color deck is after I know what the client's favorite colors are, or the colors they're drawn to, most times if they've identified that color in the color section, those colors are really too saturated to use on the walls in the space, on furniture in the space. They're very, very saturated colors and they're kind of hard to live with because they start to glow when the natural light hits them. But if I know that a client really loves a particular shade of blue in the color section, and we are talking about how to design or renovate her kitchen, then I can use that knowledge of her love of blue and point her to the neutral section, which gives me a more muted, palette. Now don't get thrown off or turned off by the terms neutral or muted or toned down. That does not mean boring. It just means that there is enough gray added to the color to really kind of dim down the intensity while still letting it be a color. So in that same illustration, if the client and I are talking about what color to paint her kitchen island, and in the first part of our conversation during the color section, she indicated that she loved the strip with hyper blue on it, and she really actually loved that color, then instead of saying hyper blue is the color we should paint the island, I'm going to go into the neutral section and find a color that has similar properties while being more livable. So how do you use this trick in your home? Identify the colors that you love, and then if they happen to be in the color section and are way too saturated, find their cousin in the neutral section. Now the third way I'm gonna teach you to use this tool is really as an assessment or an evaluation of the colors that are already in your space. This trick is gonna save you a ton of heartache and time because I'm gonna teach you how to color match what's already in the room and then create a legend that you can use when you're adding other colors into the mix. So for this trick, I'm typically looking in the whites 
or pastels section of the paint fan deck. I find that this is typically the area that you will see um, a lot of your off-whites, your whites, your ivories, your creams, and these are the colors that are on some of our softer goods, like our sofas and chairs. So when I'm walking into a client's home and we are looking at a space and they're saying, I need to redo my living room, but I gotta work with the sofa that I have. Then the first thing I'm gonna do is use my paint fan deck to identify the color of the current sofa. I wanna get an idea of the tones and colors that I'm working with or working around. And that way, I can keep this tool in my bag and when I go out and shop for furniture or fabrics or other decorative items, I've got a baseline as to knowing what's already in the room and what will work well with the new items that I'm thinking about bringing into the space. So how do you use this trick in your home? Do an inventory of the current furniture pieces in your space that you know you wanna keep and work around in your design project. Then take the color strips and gently lay them out on each piece of furniture, making sure that you've got good lighting so that you can actually see the colors line up. Then choose the color that is the closest match to the current furniture piece. And then you might wanna tag it or mark it. That way you can keep this one piece in your bag and you can use that to go with you when you do your shopping for your space. Now the final way I'm gonna teach you to use this tool is to answer to the question of what your cabinet color should be if you're doing, let's say, a makeover or refresh of a kitchen or a bathroom. Sometimes white is not achievable. Let's just go there for a second. I see people make this mistake all the time when they are doing a flip or maybe they are listing their home and want to refresh it and they say, let's just paint the cabinets white because it'll look fresh and clean and great. And then you see the pictures and you realize that white really wasn't the way to go. Sometimes white works and other times it doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't work is because it's not playing well with the other colors in the space. Remember, the way a color shows up in a room is directly related to the other things around it. But let's say you did that assessment and you realize your home, yes, a white would work. We just need to know what's the right white. Sometimes the answer is as simple as just matching the trim color in your home. You can use your paint fan deck to identify a match of the color of your trim. And then you're going to take that trim color into your paint store, get a sample, and then you'll paint out a few samples to make sure it really does look like the right match before you paint your full cabinetry out. So today I've taught you four additional ways that you can use this very powerful tool to up your color game. You've learned how to identify your favorite colors in the rainbow, and then how to translate that color into a more livable option for your space. You've also learned how to use this tool to create a legend of the colors already in your space. And finally, you've learned how to use this tool to get a color match of the trim color in a space if you need a quick jump reference to the white that would work in your kitchen or bathroom cabinetry. I hope these tips have been helpful for you and I can't wait to hear from you which of these tips you love the most. Which one are you gonna use on your next design project? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.